presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob, uh, TFNN. Tom, earlier today, around uh, 11, so you can check the archives after this show if you want to see his show from earlier. So let's take a look. Obviously, big news of the day, uh, crude oil going up. Uh, we're at $86.50 right now. Uh, the Saudis are going to keep that one million barrel um, kind of restriction that they've imposed on themselves uh, throughout the year. That's one million barrels per day. Um, it's a little bit difficult kind of outlook, especially uh, given we're trying to tame inflation over here. And that was always one of the things that, you know, ran the greatest risk, at least in my opinion, looking at it, would be, uh, would be fuel costs, right? And they were a large component of what was driving it earlier uh, in the year. So I believe they also... Um, I think Russia said as well they're going to maintain lower output. Of course, they're sanctioned currently, so um, that doesn't affect us in the immediate, the way that the uh, Saudi cut does as well. The other OPEC producers are also uh, just struggling um, to produce what they were uh, required to. Of course, the tune has changed now with Saudi Arabia also uh, reducing that down as well. Uh, look at it, Disney Today. It's such a sad sight. You know, we're at a... <laughs> Well, at the beginning of the year here, well, we're trading at the highest, like 118 right now, 118.22, and we're down at 81. And they have just some woes going on. It'll be interesting to see how they can, like, bounce back from it. Obviously, streaming um, wasn't as good as everyone uh, kind of anticipated it would be. Um, they still hold, you know, obviously the kind of monopoly regarding parks, right? Uh, but they had flops in their movies. Uh, of course, Star Wars didn't pan out the way that they intended. These, these movies made a lot of money, but it didn't have this kind of like long-term staying power I think they were anticipating. They recently had to close down uh, one of the um, hotels they had in, in their Star Wars park. Um, it, was a it was very pricey, and of course, as things are getting just more expensive in general, it kind of made sense. And we're seeing some cost-cutting by them, um, and, and hopefully we can see like a decent restructuring after a certain point, and we can get back up out of this, you know, 80 81 dollar price level um i know a lot of people bought in at much higher prices as well so you'll probably have a long-term hold on disney uh, for quite a while especially if you bought like you know above 90s i mean this was trading go to the three year stuff like that i mean when was the last time this even traded at this level I mean, we're going back five years right now it's trading at 109 you know 120 so i mean we're way well below five year levels here go to 15 year I mean, that's pretty insane, right? Around 2014 area. So they have a long way to go. Um, it might be like a dark age for them for a little bit. Um, I still believe they're a, they're a powerhouse, right? I mean, they might have some issues currently, um, but maybe this might be a wake-up call for them. Uh, again, a lot of their movies kind of flopped a little bit. Um, if they can really recapture um, some kind of culture there to make it better, I, I think, you know, in the, in the long term, we'll see these guys come back. I mean, it's Disney, right? It's massive. So there's some issues along with ESPN as well um, regarding some kind of like, I suppose, like uh, streaming, like the fundamentals on that, right? Um, the particulars on it. And ESPN was having some issues as well transitioning into like direct to consumer. And they're still, um, you know, still working through that as well. That was going to be a big thing for Disney if they were able to get some kind of rights regarding that. Um, but then the outlook for ESPN kind of went down a little bit as well. Let's look at the... Look at the ES Mini here. The market today is kind of sideways, uh, lower. Obviously, the NQs are, you know, again, marginally up. Same with the Qs. Tesla is seeing a great day today, uh, really hovering around like a 5% up. 
Um, there is a lot of news about their Cybertruck coming out, so we'll see if uh, that lives up to the hype. Elon is saying uh, that you can actually drive it in water for some period of time, as long as it's not too, uh, too deep, which is a, which is a wild claim. Uh, still dynamics around that 105. Again, we just keep bouncing off this $100 area. This is consolidation. And then, you know, resisting this with low volume, again, kind of a move to the downside. Factories uh, output in uh, America has also declined a little bit. Um, so that might be some kind of downward uh, effect on steel as well. The dollar obviously blew up today at 104.81. This depressed uh, gold a little bit. You can see the gold contract. Not too much, though. We're still at 1951. Uh, the Dow futures, again, we're just sideways to slightly down. I want to take a look, um, let's see here, at Walmart, because they've been knocking it out of the park this year, especially as, you know, we get this weird V-shape kind of thing going on, right? Uh, someone that I knew in, a, in one of my friend groups was asking, like, are we in a recession right now? And it's not, you know, you know we're not in a recession, okay? There's not, like, contraction over certain quarters, but um, I think there might be some kind of V-shape experience going on with uh, Americans, right? We saw maybe in May that uh, a shopping spree by people who are a little bit wealthier, um, that really helped prop up the economy a bit. Uh, people on the lower end, however, uh, they're definitely having to cut back a little bit of their spending, um, you know, so they might be experiencing some things related uh, that would maybe, I don't know, seem recessionary, right? not as much spending. Walmart has really come in on that, particularly in their grocery section, right? We had high food prices in the beginning of this year. Uh, there's been some kind of stabilization in that, but Walmart has been up 13% so far this entire year, uh, which is massive. You look at Target, which is a similar kind of competitor, um, they haven't been doing as well. And so really the, the big difference between these two uh, companies, and, and really for the purposes of what we're talking about, is Walmart's um, grocery section. They've been able to have very competitive prices uh, regarding their groceries, um, and then they've been able to convert uh, a lot of their people coming in to buy groceries into the rest of uh, rest of their product lines. They cut back on owning some of these, uh, you know, clothing companies as well. Uh, some of their clothing brands they sold those off, and uh, they're doing quite well. So on Thursday, uh, this was last Thursday, reached a record closing of 162.61 a share. We're back down just marginally from that right now. Um, stock started September near its all-time high. Obviously, it closed off 161.56. And this year, the company's shares are up more than 13%, and that's higher than the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Year-to-date gain of almost 5% and significantly outpaces Target. And Target, obviously, they got hit with a little bit of uh, some political scandal, I guess I could say. I don't know. Regardless, they were down pretty substantially, and year-to-date, they're down 16%. Um, pretty fascinating. And again, the analysis from this is they're able to really get these people in for their grocery business and then convert them uh, pretty easily. They do a great job at that. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil on today, um, and we have some more interesting things to speak about, so stay tuned. <laughs> Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Take a look over here. This is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Again, I've sung my praises about this, uh, or rather sung Basil's praises about this um, newsletter. It's fantastic, seriously. Goes in depth. Um, but it's concise as well. He had a, a subscriber webinar August 23rd. So when you subscribed it to any newsletter, right, uh, you get access to the archived subscriber webinars. It's awesome. If you're just getting into trading, these are phenomenal. If you're interested in uh, one host or the other, you get a better insight. And Basil's webinar was fantastic. Again, that is a 30-day money-back guarantee if you are a first-time subscriber. I strongly recommend checking out the opening call. Basil, are you with us? I am. Hi. How are you, Jake? I'm doing well. How was your Labor Day weekend? Well, the Labor Day, yeah, it's all too quick. It's actually the first three-day weekend I can remember that we've had sunshine all the way through the weekend. In fact, the first weekend, they didn't, we didn't have one day of the weekend with a big storm and the next day nice. Right. So this was a pleasure, and I'm just upset because for us, it's pretty much over. Summer, you know, the 90 degree weather will have some this week, and then afterwards it's just downhill. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, coming out of the hurricane, it was nice having some good weather. We had a uh, cold front, but for Florida, that was like, you know, 88 or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, but it was very nice. So used, The body gets used to the temperatures. It might sound to someone else like, wow, that's warm. But when you get used to something and it changes, well, it, makes, that's right. it, it has its effect. Yeah. That's right. You got to be adaptable, right? Absolutely. So, Basil, what are we looking at today? So, talk about adaptable. This is what we're looking at here. Within the well, first of all, let me just uh, give you a just brief synopsis of where I am for my subscribers to opening call. We did go short the Dow using some of the techniques, or at least one particular technique, uh, to get the high of the first of August at thirty-five thousand six seventy-nine. So, right there, we went short, and we are short the SMHs, the semiconductors from uh, two days after the high, about a point and a half off the uh, all-time high, and we had real nice trades down to the uh, uh, 143.35 low, and we were using the SOXS, the short side of the uh, three times short. So we kept the core position, we've taken a little bit off, and then we've taken, a lot, we've taken everything off the short side in the aggressive 300%. Uh, short. So we're watching this to see. Now, the, you know, we're talking about uh, adaptability. Well, 
I like to think that the SMH is the semiconductor chips, the semiconductor chips itself. If you think of chips in the 21st century as the crude oil of the 1900s, right. because they're everything, uh, not everything, but just about everything had to do with petroleum products. So now almost everything has to, anything that moves has to do with semiconductors. So I, my contention is that where the semiconductors go, Basically, the market is going to go in that direction. So there's, it made an all-time high. That was a good good clue. We, we've had really good rallies in the different indices. But this stalling formation that started in July, I think it's going to continue a little while longer with sporadic bumps to the upside. So in that regard, the semiconductors are saying, hey, don't think that it's all over now. We're, we're still showing some strength. And in that, that regard, I'm using that kind of as a benchmark to say, we're in for a very choppy week. Uh, that's what I see to subscribers on Friday. And then in my, for my subscribers, I do a, a one-hour uh, a, a video either Saturday or Sunday uh, just going uh, what's happened, what I'm expecting, the different indices, what's, what positions we have, how we're handling, et cetera. So it's, it's an educational as well as very practical experience. So within that context, so going back to the, um, let me just do this right now, going back to the Dow, um, you can see this has been a very good rally off the low, 34,028, but it's stalled at this trend line. So this is another yeah. technique. In my show tomorrow, in my Tiger Technician Hour, I'll talk about some of these patterns that I talk about, the falling axis, the declining cone formation, how you get into the inside track resistance area. And you can see the S&P has done much better it's broken out of that resistance level, right. and it's just stalling here. So, but I like to look at different time frames. And if you look at this daily time frame on the left, it's very different to the weekly. The weekly is still very strong. I use something called the nine period moving average over the 14. And look how high it is above the 14. And that shows strength. Even the Dow, which is one of the weaker indices at this, well, except for the IWM, the Russell 2000 small caps, look, it's still holding pretty well in the weekly chart. I don't want to talk about the monthlies. I'll do that on my show tomorrow, but the sure. monthlies are also holding quite well. So what I do, I like to, for my subscribers, I like to get stocks or e ETFs or whatever it is, and if I get them really low priced, it, it allows subscribers who say, you know, I don't want to put a lot of money to work, but I do want to be involved in whatever it is that's moving in the, in the direction, at least the direction that – uh, shows some uh, strength to the upside or weakness to the downside. So we have a, a stock, and it's interesting because you can see how the crude oil has been moving higher and higher, but we have something in the energy sector, uranium energy coal. Awesome. So we, we're in that at $3.46 uh, a little while ago. And here it is today, it's $4.72. I mean, that's 25 or 20, 26, 7 percent uh, increase. But what's nice is you've got a stock acting very well. You've got a stock in the daily, weekly and monthly charts improving. There are techniques that I use. This is cup formation. And this particular pattern says, you see this dash midline? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the left side number of bars to the right side number of bars, look how we went to that four thirty four dollars and thirty cent goal of uh, earlier this year in almost the same time frame, number of bars to the left to the downside and number of bars to the right. And then I have another technique called the Champion Wave Cup and Ladle. It's a breakout pattern. It's not the cup and handle that stops at the left side lip. This says in leg C or B, you go straight through that left side lip. And that's the lip on this side right here at $4.30. The week of the uh, yeah, we go week of the third of fe uh, February, we broke out of it sharply in this leg C. So that suggests that 4:30 is a support level, and that we should go to at least another higher peak. So this is leg C. At some point, we should make a lower high that makes a peak C, and then we should go to a leg D. So that's another technique that I use. So I like to put all these different techniques together, so that. What we're doing is we're following a, a game plan, mm. and that's the case here. No, and I, I think that's what's so good about your newsletter, right? Like, you know, at least for me, like starting to work here, um, I was a novice regarding, you know, any kind of trading, and especially, especially technical analysis. And, and really, I mean, just how you explained it there, right? It's explained exactly like that, too. 
in your webinars, on your show, in the newsletter, and it's something you can follow through, you know? I think also getting exposure to something like uranium, which, you know, isn't, doesn't get looked at a lot, still very, like, fascinating kind of commodity, right? I, I mean, it's just, uh, I think it's awesome. And it was really insightful, too, about the semiconductors as well. I think looking Thank at you. that as, like, an indicator going on is, is massive, because you're right. Without tech, and, I mean, what is tech, right? It runs on these semiconductors. You don't have anything that this world's built on, you know? That's really That's fascinating right. and, stuff. And the interesting thing is we don't know yet whether we're about to have a glut because, you know, all of last, know. Well, the last 18 months, they've been building fabs and they've been producing the chips. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a very interesting September and October. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Basil, if you can, stay with us just for a little bit. And uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sure. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, had Basil go off at the end of the break there, but again, I'm going to push this through opening call. Um, check it out, 30-day uh, money-back guarantee if you are a first-time subscriber. All right, let's take a little look at what's going on right now. Uh, one of the, let's see here, I'm trying to pull it up. Basil was talking about chips a little bit. There's a lot of interesting development with that. Obviously, there is a um, 
little bit of a trade war going on uh, regarding China and chips. Um, we're blocking them from purchasing some of our um, chips, which is, you know, that's massive, especially for AMD. And we take a look at AMD quickly. They've been doing all right um, at 111. Obviously, they haven't shared the same kind of win, you know, at least NVIDIA has. Um, one of the major issues that AMD faces, essentially, is that um, China contributes about 20% uh, to 25% of the company's revenue. Uh, this is massive, right? Um, having kind of purchase of AMD chips by China could be, obviously, um, having that cease could be pretty significant for AMD. Um, I think furthermore, Huawei is having breakthrough um, in chip production too. So let's pull this over here. This is from Bloomberg. Uh, Huawei teardown shows chip breakthrough and blow to US sanctions. Uh, the company's Mate 6 Pro is powered by the SMIC's seven nanometer chips. Um, this is pretty big. And obviously Huawei is not allowed to sell in the US currently. Uh, Huawei Technologies, at least their phones, um, and China's top chip maker have built an advanced seven nanometer processor uh, to power its latest smartphone. Uh, Sign Beijing is making early progress in a nationwide push to circumvent U.S. efforts to contain its ascent. Uh, Huawei's Mate 60 Pro is powered by a new Kirin 9000s chip uh, that was fabricated in China by Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp. According, obviously, to the teardown of the handset that Tech Insights conducted for Bloomberg News. So they got uh, their phone here um, or their device and they're able to see what they were working with. Um, the Chinese government is making some headway in attempts to build a domestic chip ecosystem, uh, according to the new research firm. So, I mean, you know, in a lot of ways, obviously we're not selling chips currently uh, to China. So, you know, what impact does this have uh, going forward? Well, again, we're not selling it. Um, the impact will probably be felt uh, in the near future when there really is like a massive halt on it. Um, again, with AMD being 20%, 25% uh, of their market uh, coming from China. Doing business with China on these kind of things is also a little bit difficult as well because they do have a, um, you know, kind of like a culture um, in uh, their government and business of kind of taking some trade secrets as well and reproducing it. And we've seen that with a lot of different things. Um, we'll take a look here. Intel is also making some pretty big headway. Uh, they claim to be on track to regain a foundry leadership uh, from TSMC in 2025, and that secures a large customer for what they're having is the 18A uh, node tech. One of their big issues is, again, like just keeping competitive with things like TSMC. And in this kind of report they have, they've uh, contracted TSMC as well to fabricate parts of its next generation Meteor Lake chip. Uh, while the CPU tile, like a chiplet, is fabricated using the Intel 4 node, again, that's a 7 nanometer, uh, the GPU tile will use TSMC's 5 nanometer mode, while the SOC tile and IOE tile will both use, again, TSMC's 6 nanometer mode, but they're moving away from it and hoping that they can produce some things themselves as well. And really, this revolution that's going on in um, computing is massive, and it, it doesn't even have to do with like, quantum computing or anything like that. I mean, these traditional kind of, you know, binary based computing systems, um, you know, you're seeing, hearing all these things with CPUs, the GPUs, now there's DPUs, and the idea is they're specializing these chips, right? Um, you know, the CPU is very good at doing, you know, one task, then the next task, then the next task, so it's kind of these kind of sequential, um, you know, kind of problem solving situations where the GPU runs everything, um, you know, they, obviously for the graphics processor, but really what GPU does is it, um, processes data that's kind of parallel to each other. The DPU will just be for data utilization, and that's gonna roll out in a big way soon, um, and they're just adding more. And so Intel is really like at the forefront of these kind of things, um, and uh, really I think we could see, no, nah, I wouldn't want to say a revolution because it's not like that, but the computing will be so much faster uh, going forward in the future. Furthermore, development regarding chips is uh, ARM. So they're about to have an IPO, or they're looking at least to get up to 52 billion valuation. And that's $47, about $51 share. Uh, this is obviously through SoftBank. They acquired it uh, for 32 billion in uh, 2016. Uh, chip design firm Arm on Tuesday said it's looking to fetch as much as 4.87 billion in its upcoming blockbuster initial public offering on the NASDAQ stock exchange. So a lot of people are kind of a little bit suspect of this price point. 
Uh, SoftBank obviously has had some issues in the past with some things they invested in, but this one uh, is pretty interesting. As a British company, Arm qualifies as a foreign private issuer in the U.S., and its shares will count as American Depository Shares, or ADSs. Uh, the company will list about 95.5 million ADSs at a price range between $47 and $51. Uh, at the upper end of that range, CNBC estimates that Arm will likely raise up to $4.87 billion. At the lower end, the IPO would fetch about $4.49 billion. Uh, when the company floats in New York, we'll look at the tap a deep pool of institutional funds. So this is massive. We're going to see like an arms race going forward and see if people can be competitive uh, kind of in chip manufacturing. This is the massive tech IPO of the year. I think that uh, can't be uh, overstated. At the onset of the macroeconomic and geopolitical challenges from Russia, obviously the central bank interest hikes, led to a massive slump in tech valuation, right? Tech valuation is all done with uh, discounted cash flow valuation. And with high interest rates, that kind of screws everything. Um, however, we've seen substantial uh, increases, at least, and you know, we can look at Meta, and to some extension, you could call Tesla a little bit of, of a tech company, although they're more data-driven. Um, so this will be an interesting thing uh, to see drop, and we'll see how the market responds to it. Again, I think there is a little bit right now of a current high uh, for things in the tech sector that um, are more advanced. And what I mean by that right, is like the whole conversation currently is about semiconductors and it's about AIs, right? If we can get these semiconductors to be decent, we can get chips to be better, uh, AI obviously uh, gets far better as well. Um, you know, currently as it stands now, the word AI is being used as almost like a marketing thing, right? Um, so much stuff with it. <laughs> like, for instance, I, I um, there's someone I watch online and they're saying they're using AI now, a program they have. And uh, this AI is what they've been using for as long as I've been watching them. And that's from when I was really young. And I see that a lot in um, other companies as well. We now use AI technology. And, and, and really what it is, uh, is just a, it's a computer program. Uh, it computes you know, some kind of you know, data at the end of it. Um, and the more data it gets, the better it gets at obviously being more accurate, right? Anything is like that when you have more accurate data sets. And so calling that, and it changes a little bit the way it uh, computes data as um, new information comes in. So calling that AI, um, my opinion, is kind of a misnomer in some situation, but um, once we really get good at this kind of computation, we become more energy efficient, then we'll really see an AI tech revolution, and that'll be pretty impressive. Folks, stay tuned. We have Tim Ord uh, on next. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech 
today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We have Tim Ord on the line. Tim, can you hear me? We don't have Tim Ord on the line. Well, let's see. When we get him back, uh, in the meantime, let's take a look. Uh, I want to show you this chart here we can get it on. This is the credit card account average interest going on right now. What's going on currently, obviously this is increasing and we're at a time too when a lot of US household debt um, is increasing and the use of credit cards is increasing uh, as well. Um, pandemic era savings are kind of disappearing. Um, the chief executives do not tend to sound warnings this is from this article here from Financial Times, uh, when their business is growing. Uh, JP Morgan uh, CEO Jamie Dimon was right to draw attention to credit cards this summer. He said, we've been over earning in credit for a substantial amount of time now, told investors, and we are uh, quite conscious about it. Uh, well, it looks like we might have Tim on the line. Tim, can you hear us? Yep, I'm here. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good, doing all right. How was your Labor Day weekend? Uh, it was good, it was, uh, um, too many hot dogs, but other than that, yeah. pretty good. So, no kidding, right? That's always nice a good weather. thing, though. So uh, what are we looking at today? Um, I, I got your charts. Did you finally get them? Yes, I have chart one up now, and I'm getting the other ones uh, as we speak. So, All right. Well, chart one, uh, actually, I, I kind of developed this chart several years ago. Been, anyhow, what it is, I don't know. Tell you the truth, I don't know why this works so well, but it works, and that's all you need to know. But it's a bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX ratio. And the bullish percent index for the gold miners index, what the bullish percent does is measures the percent of stocks that are on point and point and figure bicycle in the uh, gold miner uh, gold market uh, gold miners index, whatever that index stocks are in the in the uh, gold miners index, it measures a percent of stocks on buy signals using a point and figure method. And GDX is G GDX. So if you do that ratio, and this is a weekly chart, and the top window is the RSI for this for this particular ratio. So every time the weekly RSI for the bullish percent index slash GDX gets below. Um, I think 25, yeah, 25, it's at a bottom. And this chart goes back to 2008. And all the blue lines are the buy signals. And there's one uh, red line in there, and that's a failure. For some reason, it didn't work in 2013. The market went down and it actually kept going down. But all the other times, it picked out lows. And uh, some were significant lows. Actually, most of them were significant lows. Some were minor lows. But um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. So ninety percent chance uh, we're at a low here, according to this, because it's ten times this happened, one failure. So that's ninety percent that we're at set at some uh, at some sort of low. Um, uh, most signals of this type last a year. Sometimes they last a uh, couple, three years, but most of them are a year or longer. Uh, so we're sitting on a signal right now as we're talking, 
because uh, that's going to blow minus 25. We're at 15 and a half area right now. Uh, so now I want to actually, so this suggests we're at a yearly low uh, right now. Last time this thing gave a signal was last year in 2022 uh, going into the um, August low. Uh, so the market went up. Now we got, it got another buy signal uh, again pretty much in August, September here. Now, if you flip to chart two, yep, um, got it okay. over here right now. This is the we're going to go back and ADP. forth here a little bit, and this reason why I wanted to show the long term chart. Now we're going to look at a little bit of a short term chart. Anyhow, the bottom window is the fifty day average of the up down volume um, percent for GDX. Every time it got below minus twenty, which it did first part of July. Uh, every time it got below, I can take this chart back further, but every going back to uh, 2008 on this chart, but I wanted to, to kind of keep it in a shorter time frame because the signals all remain basically the same. As you can see it a lot better, but normally when you get down below minus 20, the decline is done, and usually the market flips sideways. And now sometimes you get you get minor new lows, but in general, the downtrend is done. And previous times we got the signal we got one in 2021 it flipped sideways for six months before the rally got going and in 2022 these signals come about once a year uh, the market went kind of sideways for about four months before the rally began and we're currently going sideways for for two months right now and normally when you get above 50 that's when the uptrend starts and uh, last week we were above 50 right now we're just a, sm a smidge below 50 we're at minus one point or not 50, rather zero, sorry. When this when the signal gets above zero, uh, or this indicator gets above zero, is when the rally starts. And it has to stay above zero for the rally to continue. And went above zero here last week. Now we kind of fell below it as we're 1.93 or 1.73 uh, right now, which anyhow is hovering around three. But if you go back to chart one, Again, we're at an intermediate term low. So the downside is over. There's not going to be another um, uh, catastrophic decline here. Uh, the market's probably, you know, back and forth a little bit, but the decline's over. This is really, for an intermediate term trade, this is a good place to buy. We rallied up a little bit. We kind of came down a little bit. But once you get above 50 and stay above 50, that's usually when the meat, meat of the rally starts. And all this blue area on this chart number two, is when the 50-day um, uh, average up-down volume advanced client indicator stays above zero. Uh, so it could be a little choppy in here, but the downtrend's over. We may move sideways a little bit longer. Don't know, because previous signals of this type can go from a month to six months. We're at two months now. Can it go sideways for another month? Maybe. But either way, we're, the downside is over, and either we're building a base for a rally and previous rallies, uh, again, lasted uh, a year. So, uh, in general, we expect the market to actually uh, to break above the previous highs of 36. And uh, it's hard to say where it's going to go. But uh, this is a bullish area. Tom and I were talking last week and saying, you know, this is a good place to buy. Right. On the intermediate term trade, it is. So, um, I'm holding uh, to that philosophy, I guess you might say, I'm holding to that definition. So, uh, you have a question? No, no, I think it's just very fascinating. I mean, you know, especially with everything going on today with uh, the dollar, it's good to get some, like, good conversation surrounding, you know, the GDX in general, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, that's why I kind of flip back and forth. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, this this indicator fell back, back below zero. Well, it did. But, you know, midterm-wise, on, on page one, this indicator, it works 90% of the time, so you really don't want to bet against it. It's saying that, that you're at a intermediate term low, and the previous signals of this type last a year. Um, this type of signal that we got, we're currently having right now can last several months. I'm thinking we'll probably could rally into, you know, maybe November, December, then we may take a rest first part of next year. Don't know how it's all going to gel out. But in general, we're, we're going to be a lot higher than we are now a year from now absolutely and tim uh we're, we have a short segment right after this break if you want to stay with us i'd love to look through the uh the other two charts quickly if you have time
All right, will do. Awesome. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Morton. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're about two and a half minutes until the end of the program, but we're still with Tim Ord taking a look at uh, some of his fantastic charts. Tim, you're with us? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. We're looking at the Hello. SPX, and then we have the SPY chart as well. Right, uh, chart number three, which is the uh, the middle window, is the SPX VIX ratio, mm. and um, when the S and P is making a higher high, and this ratio makes a lower high, as a, as a, as a uh, bearish divergence, and now all those red aerials going back to um, uh, several years, 2018, wherever it is, they they picked out intermediate term highs, and the last time this ratio gave a, a sell signal was back in. And actually, uh, January of 2022, and correctly picked out that high because S&P's made higher highs. This ratio made lower highs. That was a bearish divergence. What I want to point out right now is the S&P has not got back to the original highs of uh, July there. You know, we're, we're quite a ways from that high. But if you go down to the ratio, uh, if you look at the small window there, we actually made higher highs on that ratio. That's a bullish divergence. So there could be some minor pullbacks here, but it looks like to me we're going to get back probably in the, this month back up to at least the old highs up around 4,500. What happens here, I'm not for sure, but this ratio is giving a bullish sign here short term. Um, 
or the, so even though this actually this week of all the weeks in the year, this is the second weakest week of the year. Uh, so there's a good chance we see a, probably some sort of a pullback this week. It's one of the reasons why I'm short. But I'm, I'm keeping a short lease on that short because I don't think anything major to the downside is indicated here, especially with this SPX VIX ratio making a higher high where the SPX is making a lower high. So after this pullback, probably during expiration week, we're going to have a rally. In my opinion, uh, the rally, which is next expiration week, or next week is expiration week, will test. Uh, the old highs of uh, July. So, point that out. I know we're out of time. Yeah, sorry we so. had some issues with the chart there. Um, I think you'll be on sometime this week again. I might be filling in for Tom. So, I we can go over the last chart as well. So, Tim, that thank you good. so much for being on with us. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening.